suppose the big talking point this week is in Wales. Two defeats, players walking out of a sponsor's dinner earlier this week. Talk of strike, not playing against a- England. Alan Wynne Jones saying, you know, yesterday, if you treat people badly for long enough, this is where you get to. That whole, you know, it seems to be such a big mess between the WRU and the regions and the players' salary. Like, what do you make of it all? It's a real sad situation, isn't it? <laughs> It's a very difficult one um, because I think uh, it's the last thing they need need is need at the moment. Obviously, they've had other issues in previous weeks um, about you know um, working conditions in the WRU and lots of stuff coming out there, which was uh, unsavoury and 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 timing of it terrible right before Six Nations. So it seems like they've a lot of challenges and issues going on. Um, this one is obviously financial, and it's um, uh, financial issues with with uh, uh, the money that the WRU gives to the regions, um, and also then that has a knock on effect in what what the the players are paid and the salaries they're paid. So, I know from a player's point of view that you know if you're coming into the final year of your contract, you're negotiating November, December, hoping to put it to bed before Christmas. Um, knowing that you're either moving on or you're signing a new contract and it gives everyone time to get their squads together and, and know who's available from. Um, when you're in February and guys have a couple of months left in their contracts and they're not sure whether, where they're going. And I listened to Alan Wynne Jones yesterday speaking about, you know, players uh, now being in a position where it's becoming more difficult if they have to move because, in France, in the UK, um, in the provinces here, you know, it's standard practice that they try and get their business done pre-Christmas and they make their announcements kind of end of January, start of February, and these deals are done weeks ago. Um, so it's it's a tough one. It's a tough situation. The players, I feel for them um, because, you know, that security of, of knowing where you're going to be next year, where you're living, a lot of them have kids and partners and wives and stuff like that. So it's a big knock-on effect the reality here though is um they have financial issues so the agreements that are kind of in principle in place with the regions that are being proposed um they're reduced and the money is reduced and they've had pay cuts and and i know matt is going to talk more about that uh, but it's a really messy situation and it's the last thing you need with your team losing the first game to Ireland, then losing comprehensively a record score in Murrayfield. So, um, I don't know, Warren Gatlin is probably scratching his head saying, "What? what why did I come back here? Um, I, I'm, I'm saying that in jest. I don't think he is, but I think there's a lot of issues here and problems. Um, part of one of the statements from the WRU, in which the PRB chairman, the players professional, or the board announced that the professional rugby board, sorry, the PRB, they put out a statement which was um, seen as being disrespectful and and disappointed by the players' union. Uh, The new agreement offers a complete funding package to the professional game in Wales, but it does come with financial limitations which will directly affect salary negotiations. So, in other words, um, and he says the cold facts are that the WRU and the clubs have been paying salaries that their businesses cannot afford. So it's totally down to money here. So in other words, if you're running a business and you're paying your staff uh, more than you can afford, and that's what it is. So it's it's a shame to see because, um, you know, we've, we've a great connection with Welsh players, clubs in the URC, um, at international level. I have lots of friends who played... And are still playing for Wales. Um, so it's sad to see. And the players are stuck in the middle here. And they've got to stick up for themselves and know their market value. And obviously they make decisions then about whether they will take a pay cut. Another one. Um, I just think Alan Wynne Jones was, was... He looked angry yesterday. He looked really disappointed at what's going on. So um, it's a really tough situation. And it's sad to see. Yeah, Matt. From all intents and purposes, it seems to be, you know, a cut of COVID, 20%, as you're going to speak on it, another 20% maybe cuts. Like, you just got to feel so sorry for the players. Sure, it's all about governance. And Welsh rugby has had poor governance 
for, you know, we're getting on two decades now. Um, you know, the whole situation of, of when the, the Celtic League, as it was in 2001, kicked off, the, the, the decision to then after combine Welsh teams, so for, you know, the, the Ospreys are Swansea and Neath, who hated each other, unbelievable rivalry, never got on. There was a fight at every match. I played for Swansea, so I, know, I can show you the scars. But the, the, the other part is they would draw 15,000 at St Helens, which was Swansea's home ground, 15,000 people. You know, and you, you go to the Nile at Neath. It, it, I can't remember the exact figures, but the, the joint was packed. You, you'd go to Clonethley and, and play at, the, at Stratty Park, the beautiful Australia Park. It would be heaving. I know Alan's played there. It's a fantastic place. You go to the new grounds now with the new franchises, they're getting 2,000 people to these things. It is a financially unsustainable model. So if Leinster and Munster and Ulster, if, if they're only getting 2,000, like, we wouldn't have the success and we'd have a crisis on our hands in Ireland. Now, we don't. But this is because they've lost the Welsh public. And this is all about governments and leadership from the top. And Alan's right. It, it, you know, like in a business, it, at a certain point, it becomes unsustainable. And Welsh rugby has hit that. Now, they should have intervened in this many, many, many years ago. Um, I, I literally bumped in to a former Welsh uh, player yesterday who's, who's still playing here in France. Um, I've known him for many years. And he told me exactly what you said. So it's, this is factual that the players took 20% during COVID and they've been asked to take another 20% now. That's a 40% cut and we all know the cost of living has gone through the roof. And, and uh, you know, when they come out and say the average a player gets is 100000 when everyone, someone says average, my ears go up because that means someone at the top is getting a lot of money and the boys down the bottom might be on thirty forty thousand 40000 before tax. So the players are in a lot of strife. Uh, where do they go to? What do they do? What's their motivation? Uh, can they get another gig somewhere? Can they get another contract? And I can see why Alan Wynne-Jones is upset. Because he's a guy who's given his life to Welsh rugby. Given it, no one could give more than he's gone. He's an absolutely inspirational man and a, and a guy to admire for every reason. The way he's conducted himself, the way he's played off the field, the way he's conducted himself, his leadership. And he's seen something he's given his life for crumbling. And, uh, you know, I, I, I know he feels because I've seen that in Australia. I've seen that happen in Australia. And that's all about the boardroom at the, at the national level. The boardroom in Australian rugby for two decades or a bit under let the game down. Now they've, now they've picking themselves up off the floor. They are picking themselves off the floor. So it's not terminal for Welsh rugby, but there is a lot of pain to, to have. And as I said on, on the TV show, uh, on our TV show last week when we were covering the game, I don't believe Welsh rugby has hit rock bottom yet. I think there is still some falling to go, which is, makes me very, very sad for all the reasons Alan said I played there. A lot of friends. I, I, I'm in Irish rugby through Mike Ruddock because I played with Mike in, in Swansea. And Mike got me to Leinster. That's how I got to Ireland. So, you know, to see Welsh rugby where it is, not good. it's not good for any of us, but it's, it's heartbreaking as well. Ian, you've retired a couple of years. Contract time around, as Alan said, November, December. Probably always an interesting and one you always want to get sorted. But this takes it to a new level for these players with the new contracts and not knowing where they're going to be. Yeah, you, 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 as Alan said, you try to get everything sort of sewed up uh, before Christmas time, and I think, I think there's around seventy players, uh, you know, who are out of contract with Wales next year, and and when you when you think of that, you you, you know, put it puts it in some sort of scale, you know, you could have an exodus of of those players, which would just be a huge hit for Wales. Um, but it, it's just it's almost the tip of the iceberg, you know, with everything that's happened recently and. It's just a really sad situation because everything in some ways is coming on to the performances on the pitch. I think we've been so disappointed with uh, with Wales in the last two performances, even particularly the, the Scotland one. They just look like a team that is sort of deflated almost, that all these uh, exterior things are really... Uh, mounting to to pressure on their shoulders and you know for, for someone like Alwyn Jones you know one of the greatest players to have ever played I'm sure coming into his last World Cup this is the last thing that you want to be dealing with uh, going into you know 
the most important competition, you know, every four years. Uh, this is the last thing they want to be dealing with. And you you read things of, you know, with the Netflix uh, coverage, you know, uh, being kicked out of, of meetings and everything like that. It is just not a not a happy camp. And, yeah, I think Wales uh, are really, you know, hopefully that there's no strike action uh, for the next game, I think, against England. Um, Al- Alwyn said that that's going to be the last uh, last case basically that they don't want that to happen but a hugely uh, frustrating period for the Welsh players I can imagine if, the, if yeah, they well, strike yeah. uh, if they strike for the England Wales game or the Wales England game and it doesn't go ahead that's going to cost them millions so the last thing they need to do uh, and I know that's that's the players who are you know very very fed up but I really hope that that doesn't happen obviously the Six Nations is messed up then as well um, but you know, the financial implications could be even worse. So hopefully they can make some progress. They need investment, Matt. I I, I think they need someone to underwrite them or support them or whether it be a financial institution and get, get money and lots of stuff that has to happen probably in the Welsh game. Um, hopefully it happens because they're, they're, you know, you don't want to see that going on with another nation and, and particularly as our neighbours. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of sad to see at the moment. Yeah, it seems that things need change and let's hope it happens rather quickly if it can.